Adult, Child, and Infant CPR for Bystanders. Everyone should know first aid. First aid is the care and treatment that is provided to an ill or injured person before medical services are provided. First aid can range from calling emergency medical personnel to performing more advanced procedures such as administering CPR. The goal in learning first aid is to acquire the skills and knowledge necessary to provide help in a medical emergency. Any rescuer can improve a situation where a victim suddenly collapses. If the victim is unconscious, not breathing, breathing inadequately, or gasping for air, activate the emergency medical system immediately. Retrieve the nearest AED if one is available and bring it to the victim. At this point, follow the EMS dispatcher or 911 operator's instructions. If a rescuer is not trained in CPR, the operator will verbally instruct the rescuer in compression-only CPR, which we will cover later in this video. All trained rescuers should provide chest compressions for victims of cardiac arrest. In addition, if the trained rescuer is able and willing to perform rescue breaths, compressions and breaths should be provided in a ratio of 30 compressions to 2 breaths, averaging at least 100 compressions per minute. New studies have led to important changes to CPR methods. Here is a brief overview of the steps required in an emergency situation. Number 1. Survey the scene check the area for danger. 2. Check for responsiveness. Open the person's airway and do a quick visual check for breathing for 5 seconds. 3. Call 911, activate EMS, and have someone retrieve the closest AED if available. 4. Give 30 compressions. Place both hands on the center of the person's chest. Push hard and fast at a depth of at least 2 inches. 5. Open the person's airway and give two breaths. 6. Continue CPR by giving 30 compressions and two breaths until EMS arrives. If an AED becomes present, turn the unit on and follow the voice prompts. Follow these steps and you can save a life. Now, let's take a look at the life-saving sequence in detail. Step 1. Survey the scene. Once you recognize an emergency, take charge of the situation. Look for things around the scene that may threaten your own safety, such as fire, hazardous fumes, or live electrical wires. If your own safety is threatened, stay back and allow properly equipped and trained professionals to handle any dangerous situations. Now that we've surveyed the scene, check for responsiveness. To check for responsiveness, gently tap the casualty and ask them if they're okay. If the person does not respond, Open the airway and do a quick visual check for breathing for 5 seconds. Gasping breaths should not be confused with effective breathing. If the casualty is unconscious or unresponsive, alert EMS or 911 immediately. If possible, send a bystander to make the call and report back to you with confirmation that EMS personnel are on their way. If you are alone and the casualty is an unconscious adult, call immediately. If the casualty is an unconscious child or infant, perform five cycles or two minutes of CPR first, then call EMS. Children and infants have a better chance of being revived if CPR is started immediately, whereas adults usually require more advanced medical care and equipment, such as an automatic external defibrillator. If the person is unresponsive and or not breathing, call 911 and get an AED if available. Retrieve the nearest AED if one is available and bring it to the person. Recovery Position If an unconscious or semi-conscious casualty with no suspected head or spinal injury is breathing and lying on their back, place them in the recovery position. The recovery position is used to keep the casualty's airway open and clear of fluid 
especially when the airway and breathing cannot be continually monitored. Straighten the casualty's legs. Place the arm nearest you over the casualty's head with the palm facing up. Bring the other arm across the casualty's chest and hold the hand palm outward against their face. With your other hand, grab the casualty's knee furthest from you and pull their leg up so that the foot is flat on the ground. Pull the leg at the knee towards you, rolling the casualty onto their side. Position the casualty's leg so that both the hip and knee are bent at right angles. Tilt the casualty's head back to secure an open airway. Monitor the casualty's airway and breathing until help arrives. You can also use the Haynes recovery position to minimize movement of the head and spine. If you need to leave the person alone to call 911, roll them into the Haynes recovery position first. Raise the arm farthest from you over the person's head, palm facing up. Place the arm closest to you across the chest. Bend the leg closest to you. Place your forearm under the shoulder and grasp the base of the person's skull. Carefully roll the person away from you using your forearm to help stabilize the head and neck. Raise the knee for support. Let us now learn adult CPR, also known as cardiopulmonary resuscitation. The body needs a constant supply of oxygen to allow vital organs to function properly. Oxygen intake is managed by the respiratory system, which is comprised of the airway and lungs. The body's circulatory system, which includes the heart and blood vessels, functions to transport oxygen to every cell in the body. If the heart stops functioning, this is called cardiac arrest and initiates CPR immediately. Did you know? When the breathing stops, the brain begins to die in four to six minutes. The average 911 response time is nine minutes. Without immediate CPR, the person has little chance of survival. If the person is gasping or not breathing adequately, initiate adult CPR for cardiac arrest. Cardiac arrest occurs when a person is not breathing and has no signs of blood circulation. This means that the heart has stopped pumping blood throughout the body. CPR or cardiopulmonary resuscitation is a technique that helps to circulate oxygenated blood throughout the body and delays permanent organ damage. CPR involves two separate components, chest compressions and breaths. When doing chest compressions, you push the blood in and out of the heart, circulating it around the body. When giving breaths, you are providing the casualty with oxygen. When you alternate between chest compressions and breaths, you are performing CPR and you are helping to keep the person alive. To do CPR, place the casualty face up on a hard surface. Place the heel of your hand in the center of the casualty's chest between the chest muscles straight across from their armpit. Give 30 compressions at least 2 inches deep. Compressions will force the blood out of the heart and circulate it around the body. Allow complete recoil of the chest between compressions. Push hard enough to achieve an appropriate depth. Go at a rate of at least 100 compressions per minute. Minimize any pauses or interruptions when giving compressions. Open the airway and give two breaths. Open the airway using the head tilt chin lift method. Tilting the head back and lifting the chin will move the tongue away from the back of the throat and allow an open airway. Let's take a look at that on a model. Give two slow breaths to oxygenate the blood now. When giving two slow breaths, keep the airway open. Seal the nose shut. Place your mouth around the person's mouth with a tight seal. Each breath should be given over one second with sufficient volume to achieve visible chest rise. Use a breathing barrier when possible. Avoid excessive or quick ventilations as this may cause the person to vomit. Repeat cycles of 30 compressions and two breaths. CPR circulates and oxygenates the blood. It helps to keep the brain and vital organs alive. 
Keep your arms at a 90 degree angle to the body. Keep your elbows locked. Make sure your arms are straight up and down. If you feel the ribs break, keep going. In cases of sudden cardiac arrest, the oxygen in the victim's blood is still high. Therefore, chest compressions are the most important part of CPR. In the case of respiratory-related causes of arrest, the breaths are now important. The current recommendation for CPR includes compressions with breaths, as it fulfills a more universal role in dealing with both cardiac and respiratory-related causes of death. Continue CPR until emergency medical personnel arrive and take over. You are too exhausted to continue. Signs of life return, spontaneous coughing, breathing, or movement. The area becomes dangerous. An AED arrives. Did you know? 80% of all sudden cardiac arrests happen at home. About 60% are witnessed. Performing immediate CPR can double a person's chance of survival. Compressions only CPR for trained rescuers. Compression only CPR is a new and acceptable life-saving method that can be used if a trained bystander is not able, willing, or equipped to perform rescue breaths or has forgotten how to perform CPR. At minimum, they should provide compression only CPR, which emphasizes continuous and effective chest compressions at a depth of at least two inches. Once another trained bystander arrives who is able, willing, or equipped to perform rescue breaths, traditional CPR of 30 compressions and two breaths will resume. Current research has shown that survival rates for sudden cardiac arrest are similar for those who received compression-only CPR versus traditional CPR with breaths. Compressions-only CPR for untrained rescuers. If an adult victim suddenly collapses, stops breathing, and a bystander is not trained in CPR, the bystander should follow the directions of the EMS dispatcher and provide compression-only CPR. Compression-only CPR should continue until trained rescuers arrive on the scene and should include external defibrillation when an AED arrives. Defibrillation. A person in cardiac arrest requires CPR to provide oxygenated blood to the body. Without CPR, the brain dies within four to six minutes. Early CPR and defibrillation increases the chance of survival. Water. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay, ambulance. Okay, guys, how far are you in the park? Oh. No pulse. Okay, we resume CPR. <laughs> Come on, Dad. Okay, patient still in VF. Machine's charging. We're gonna shock at 360. All clear. Shocking now. A shock delivered. A defibrillator is used to shock the heart. This allows the heart to regain a regular and effective rhythm. Maximum benefit occurs when defibrillation is provided within five minutes from the point of unresponsiveness. Okay, can we clear it? The shock coming? Stand clear. Shock in. One shock. Automated external defibrillation. With the increased use and research involving automated external defibrillators, we now know early defibrillation is vital to the chances of survival for a casualty of sudden cardiac arrest. The advancements in technology have also made AEDs more user-friendly and significantly less expensive, so more businesses and individuals have access to them. The fully automatic AED properly assesses for heart rhythm, allowing all rescuers, even those who are not trained in heart rhythm interpretation, to provide a potentially life-saving shock to a casualty experiencing cardiac arrest. Most AEDs will now also instruct untrained rescuers in performing CPR on a casualty when required. An AED, or automated external defibrillator, is a portable device that is used to analyze heart rhythm in the event of a cardiac arrest. It also functions to determine if an electrical shock 
can or cannot be delivered to the heart in order to restore a normal rhythm. An AED is used to detect the absence or presence of a shockable heart rhythm. If either ventricular fibrillation or ventricular tachycardia is detected, the AED will advise the user by voice prompt to deliver the shock. Push flashing button to deliver shock. When a shock is delivered, it will temporarily stop all electrical activity in the heart. This momentary break allows the electrical impulses to reset, restoring a natural heart rhythm and normal blood circulation. When the unit is turned on, a voice prompt notifies the user to place electrodes on patient's bare chest. Apply pads to patient's bare chest as shown. A diagram on the electrodes illustrates proper positioning. Once the electrodes are attached, another voice prompt advises, do not touch patient, analyzing rhythm. Analyzing heart rhythm, do not touch the patient. The AED will analyze the person's heart rhythm to determine if a shock should be delivered. For the AED to accurately evaluate heart rhythm, the casualty should not be touched or moved. Movement hinders the AED's ability to accurately analyze the heart's rhythm. If the AED advises a shock to be delivered, the user will be prompted, shock advised, charging. Shock advised, charging. When the unit is fully charged, the user is prompted to stand clear. Stand clear. An alarm will sound until the shock button is pushed. Press flashing shock button. Shock one delivered. To avoid injury, it is extremely important that no one come into contact with the casualty as the shock is being delivered. Before you push the shock button, be sure to say out loud, I'm clear, you're clear, everybody's clear. When the shock button is pushed, it is normal for the passing current to produce involuntary muscle contractions. The user is prompted to continue CPR for two minutes or five cycles before reanalyzing the heart rhythm. If two rescuers are present, CPR should be performed while a defibrillator is being obtained and readied for use. Evidence has shown that even short interruptions in CPR has negative effects. When the AED arrives, apply the pads, if possible, without interrupting chest compressions. Special considerations for AED. Bear the casualty's chest. Remove top clothing, including bra, jewelry, or medicine patches. Water or sweat on the chest must be dried. Remove excessive chest hair where the AED pads are placed. Note, most AEDs come with an accessory kit, which will include a razor. Reposition electrodes 2.5 centimeters away from implanted pacemakers. Use an AED as normal for someone who is pregnant. For a child or infant, if no child or infant pads are available, use adult pads. If the pads are closer than 2.5 centimeters or one inch apart, place one in the middle of the chest and one in the middle of the back. If the person is lying in water deep enough to splash, Move the person before applying an AED. Pad, or public access defibrillation, is a movement concerned with making AEDs available in public areas and advocates legislation that allows professional responders, as well as the general public, access to AEDs without the approval of a physician. Let us learn about the number one killer known as cardiovascular disease. Cardiovascular disease is the disease of the heart and blood vessels. High blood pressure, as well as the buildup of cholesterol and other cellular debris, can damage the inner walls of the blood vessels, making them hard and thick. A heart attack or stroke can happen suddenly, but cardiovascular disease develops gradually. Various risk factors increase the chances of developing this disease, and specific lifestyle changes can be adopted to help reduce the risk. These include being smoke-free, maintaining a healthy, low-fat diet, exercising regularly, reducing stress, and controlling your blood pressure. Heart attack. If cardiovascular disease happens in the heart and leads to a partial obstruction of the coronary artery, in some cases, this will cause chest pain known as angina. If the coronary artery becomes completely blocked, 
This will cut off the oxygen supply to the heart muscle and cause a heart attack. Heart attack is caused by cardiovascular disease. It is mainly caused by atherosclerosis, which hardens the arteries. Atherosclerosis, the buildup of plaque caused by cholesterol and other debris that narrows the arteries. Heart attack pain can range from discomfort to a crushing feeling in the chest. The major symptom is persistent chest pain or discomfort that lasts for more than 10 minutes. A heart attack can feel like angina, except that the pain does not subside with medication and rest. Other signs and symptoms of angina and heart attack include radiating pain into the neck, arms, back, or jaw, sweating and pale skin, nausea and vomiting, shortness of breath, fear and anxiety, and denial. An important thing to remember is that some people do not experience chest pain during a heart attack. This is especially true for women who may experience upper abdominal or back pain instead. If you believe that the person is having a heart attack or are unsure, have someone call 911 or make the call yourself. If you suspect that a person is having a heart attack, assist the person with any medication such as nitroglycerin. Nitroglycerin is a prescribed medication that helps to dilate the blood vessels so that the oxygen can get into the heart muscle. Nitroglycerin facts. Angina is usually relieved with rest and nitroglycerin. If the casualty has taken medication for erectile dysfunction within the past 24 hours, do not assist them to take nitroglycerin. If nitroglycerin comes in a pill or spray form, the casualty must administer it under their tongue. The nitroglycerin dose may be repeated every five minutes until the pain is relieved or until the maximum three doses have been administered. ASA, most commonly known as aspirin, is used to prevent clots and can be very beneficial for someone having a heart attack. Suggest the person chew two 80 milligram ASA tablets or one regular strength 325 milligram ASA tablet. As you wait for EMS to arrive, Comfort and reassure the person to reduce anxiety and pain. Loosen any tight clothing around the neck, chest, and waist. Keep monitoring breathing and consciousness, and be prepared to do CPR. Stroke. Atherosclerosis can also appear in the arteries of the brain, causing a stroke. A stroke happens when there is lack of blood flow to the brain. It is caused either by a sudden clot in an artery on the way to the brain or by the rupture of a blood vessel in the brain. A transient ischemic attack, TIA, is a condition that is caused by reduced blood supply to a particular part of the brain. Signs and symptoms of a TIA are the same as a stroke, but a TIA may only last for a few minutes to 24 hours. A TIA leaves no permanent damage and is not life-threatening but it is a warning sign that a stroke may happen soon. Signs and symptoms of a stroke and TIA. Remember the acronym FAST as a way to check for the signs of a stroke and to get immediate help. F stands for face, facial numbness or weakness, especially on one side. A stands for arm, with their eyes closed, have the casualty raise both arms in front of them. Check if one arm does not move as well or drifts down in relation to the other. S stands for speech, slurred speech or difficulty speaking or understanding. T stands for time, time is important, call EMS 911 immediately. Early treatment can result in a better recovery. Other signs and symptoms of a stroke or TIA include sudden weakness, numbness or tingling on one side of the face and body difficulty with vision, sudden severe and unusual headache, dizziness, confusion. If you believe that a person is having a stroke or are unsure, have someone call 911 or make the call yourself. If the casualty is conscious and can speak, have them rest in a comfortable position. If the casualty loses consciousness or becomes semi-conscious, place them into the recovery position with the affected side of the body facing up. This will reduce the chance of tissue or nerve damage to the affected side. Do not give the casualty anything to eat or drink.
Let's continue by learning about airway obstructions, commonly known as choking. Choking is a life-threatening emergency that occurs when airflow to and from the lungs is reduced or completely cut off due to an airway obstruction. An airway obstruction can be caused by swelling of the airway due to an injury or a result of a severe allergic reaction such as anaphylaxis. It can also occur when a foreign object, such as a piece of food, blocks the airway. The airway is the passage through which air moves from the nose and the mouth through the trachea or windpipe and into the lungs. Let us now learn what to do if a person is conscious and choking. If the person is coughing, encourage them to continue. Get consent to offer help. If the person is barely able to breathe and coughing is weak or absent, lean the person forward and deliver five back blows in between the shoulder blades with the heel of your hand. If the back blows failed to dislodge the object, give the person five abdominal thrusts. Abdominal thrusts simulate the action of coughing air that is trapped in the lungs is forced out and pushes the object out of the airway. Stand behind the casualty and wrap your arms around their abdomen. Make a fist with one hand. Place the thumb side of the fist above the navel and well below the ribcage. Grab the fist with your other hand and deliver inward and upward thrusts sharply. Continue to alternate five back blows and five abdominal thrusts until the object is coughed up, the person starts to breathe, or the person goes unconscious. Let us now learn how to help an unconscious adult who is choking. If the person is unresponsive and not breathing, call 911 and begin CPR. Give 30 compressions and two breaths. If the first breath does not go in, tilt the casualty's head further back or reposition the airway to make sure the tongue is not blocking the airway. Once the head is tilted further back, try to give another breath. If the first breath does not go in, reposition the airway by tilting the head further back and attempt to ventilate again. If the breaths still do not go in, continue CPR for choking. In someone who is unconscious and choking, CPR can help relieve the obstruction by increasing the pressure in the airways. Give 30 compressions at least 2 inches deep. Compressions will help relieve the obstruction by increasing the pressure in the airway. Pushing the ribcage down forces air out of the lungs and this may help push out the obstruction. Check the mouth for the obstruction using the tongue jaw lift. Grasp both the tongue and lower jaw between your thumb and fingers and lift up while opening and checking the mouth. Attempt to ventilate to see if your breaths go in. If the breaths are still not going in, repeat cycles of 30 compressions, check the mouth for the obstruction, and attempt to ventilate. If you see the object, lift the jaw and tongue and sweep out the object. If the rescue breaths go in, this means the airway is now clear. If the casualty is still showing no signs of breathing, immediately begin CPR for resuscitation. Let us now learn when and how to provide child CPR, also known as cardiopulmonary resuscitation. Survey the scene. Check the area for danger. Once you've determined that the area is safe, check for level of consciousness. If the child is unconscious, assume implied consent and tap the child and shout to see if the child responds. Tap the child and shout to see if the child responds. Open the child's airway and do a quick visual check for breathing for five seconds. Gasping breaths should not be confused with effective breathing. If the child is unresponsive and or not breathing, call 911 and get an AED if available. If you are alone, provide five cycles or two minutes of CPR first, then call fast for EMS or 911. Carry the child to the phone if you are able.
If you are alone, provide two minutes of CPR first before calling 911. Most children suffer respiratory-related causes of arrest. Therefore, early CPR provides the best chance of survival. If the child is gasping or not breathing adequately, initiate child CPR for cardiac arrest. To do CPR, place the child face up on a hard surface. Place the heel of your hand in the center of the casualty's chest, between the chest muscles, straight across from their armpit. Give 30 compressions, 2 inches or one-third the depth of the chest. You can use one or two hands to do compressions. If using one hand, maintain an open airway with the other. Open the child's airway and give two breaths. Open the airway using the head tilt, chin lift method. Give two slow breaths to oxygenate the blood now. When giving two slow breaths, keep the airway open, seal the nose shut, place your mouth around the child's mouth with a tight seal. Each breath should be given over one second with sufficient volume to achieve visible chest rise. Use a breathing barrier when possible. Avoid excessive or quick ventilations, as this may cause the child to vomit. Repeat cycles of 30 compressions and two breaths. When doing compressions, you should go at a rate of at least 100 compressions per minute. Keep circulating and oxygenating the child's blood. Continue CPR until emergency medical personnel arrive and take over. You are too exhausted to continue. Signs of life return, spontaneous coughing, breathing or movement. The area becomes dangerous. An AED arrives. Things to consider. If the child is breathing and or vomiting, place them in the recovery position. Just how we learned, the arm closest to you goes up, grab their other arm and their leg and bring them gently to their side. Once they're on their side, tilt their head back. Monitor the breathing and keep the airway open. Await arrival of emergency medical personnel. If the AED arrives, turn it on. Bare chest. Attach pads. Place one pad on the center front of the chest and one pad on the center back. The AED will analyze for heart rhythm. If a shock is advised, Stand clear and say, I'm clear, you're clear, everybody's clear, and push to shock. Continue CPR after shock delivery. The AED will reanalyze every two minutes. If no child pads are available, use adult pads. Place the pads as illustrated. If adult pads are closer than one inch apart, Place one on the child's center front and one on the child's center back. Let us now learn what to do if a child is conscious and choking. Causes of choking. Swallowing large pieces of food without chewing them adequately. Eating while talking or laughing. Running or playing with food or objects in the mouth. Choking is always a concern for younger children and infants who play with small toys and eat unattended. Have the child or infant chew food thoroughly before swallowing. Discourage boisterous talking or laughing while eating. Feed children only when they are seated. Make sure they eat slowly and calmly. Check the area for small objects, coins, or toys with small parts. Feed an infant soft food in small pieces. Always supervise the child when eating. Keep young children away from balloons, which may burst into small pieces. Signs and symptoms of choking. Wheezing when inhaling. Inability to speak or cough. Clutching at the throat. Do you want another piece of toast, Johnny? 
If the child is coughing, encourage them to continue. If coughing becomes weak or absent, deliver five back blows in between the shoulder blades with the heel of your hand. If the back blows failed to dislodge the object, stand or kneel behind the child. Hold the fist against the abdomen, above the navel and below the rib cage. Give five abdominal thrusts, pulling inwards and upwards sharply. Continue to alternate five back blows and five abdominal thrusts until the object is coughed up, the child starts to breathe, or the child goes unconscious. Let us now learn how to help a child who is unconscious and choking. If the child is unresponsive and not breathing, have someone call 911. If you are alone, provide two minutes of care first, then call fast for 911. Carry the child to the phone if you are able. Give 30 compressions and two breaths. If the first breath does not go in, tilt the child's head further back or reposition the airway to make sure the tongue is not blocking the airway. Once the head is tilted further back, attempt to ventilate again. If the first breath does not go in, reposition the airway by tilting the head further back and attempt to ventilate again. If the breaths still do not go in, continue CPR for choking. Give 30 compressions, two inches or one third the depth of the chest. Compressions will force the air out of the lungs and dislodge the obstruction. Check the mouth for the obstruction using the tongue jaw lift. Grasp both the tongue and lower jaw between your thumb and fingers and lift up while opening and checking the mouth. Attempt to ventilate to see if your breaths go in. If the breaths are still not going in, repeat cycles of 30 compressions, check the mouth for the obstruction, and attempt to ventilate. If you see the object, lift the jaw and tongue and sweep out the object. If the rescue breaths go in, this means the airway is now clear. If the child is still showing no signs of breathing, immediately begin CPR for resuscitation. Let us now learn when and how to perform infant CPR, also known as cardiopulmonary resuscitation. Survey the scene. Check the area for danger. Tap the infant and shout to see if the infant responds. Check for responsiveness. Open the infant's airway and do a quick visual check for breathing for five seconds. Gasping breaths should not be confused with effective breathing. If the infant is unresponsive and or not breathing, call 911 and get an AED if available. If you are alone, provide two minutes of CPR first before calling 911. Most children suffer respiratory-related causes of arrest. Therefore, early CPR provides the best chance of survival. If the infant is gasping or not breathing adequately, initiate infant CPR for cardiac arrest. To do CPR, place the infant face up on a hard surface. To find the finger position, place two fingers just below the nipple line. Give 30 compressions, one and a half inches or at least one third the depth of the chest. Open the airway and give two breaths. Open the airway by tilting the infant's head slightly. Give two slow breaths to oxygenate the blood now. When giving two slow breaths, keep the head in a neutral position. Seal your lips tightly over the infant's nose and mouth. Each breath should be given over one second with sufficient volume to achieve visible chest rise. Watch the chest to see that your breaths are going in. Avoid excessive or quick ventilations as this may cause the infant to vomit. Repeat cycles of 30 compressions and two breaths. A few things to remember when giving infant CPR is to use your fingers when doing compressions and you should put your mouth over the nose and the mouth when giving breaths. Continue CPR until emergency medical personnel arrive and take over. You are too exhausted to continue. Signs of life return, spontaneous coughing, breathing or movement. The area becomes dangerous. An AED arrives. 
Use of an automated external defibrillator is recommended for use on infants under one year of age. If no infant pads are available, use child or adult pads. Place one on the center of their chest and one on the center of their back. Things to consider. If the infant is breathing and or vomiting, place them in the recovery position. Monitor the breathing and keep the airway open. Await the arrival of emergency medical personnel. Let us now learn what to do if the infant is conscious and choking. If the infant is coughing or is making any sounds, this means they are getting enough air to breathe. Similar to an adult and child, allow the infant to continue coughing so they can clear their own airway. If you determine that the partial obstruction is caused by swelling of the airway due to an infection, there's little you can do and get medical help immediately. If the infant is responsive and choking and cannot cry, cough, or breathe, initiate five back blows and five chest thrusts sequence. Turn the infant face down on your forearm with the head lower than the body. Make sure the infant's head and neck are supported. Give five back blows forcefully between the shoulder blades with the heel of your hand. Turn the infant over and give five chest thrusts. When giving five chest thrusts, keep your fingers at a 90 degree angle. Compress the sternum one third to one half the depth of the chest. Push until you feel resistance. Each thrust should be a separate and distinct attempt to dislodge the obstruction. Repeat five back blows and five chest thrusts until the object is coughed up, the infant starts to cry or breathe, or until the infant goes unconscious. Let us now learn how to help an infant who is unconscious and choking. If the infant is unresponsive and not breathing, have someone call 911. If you are alone, provide two minutes of care first, then call fast for 911. Carry the infant to the phone if you are able. Give 30 compressions and two breaths. If the breath does not go into the infant's lungs, Retilt the head to a neutral position and attempt to ventilate again. If the first breath does not go in, reposition the airway and attempt to ventilate again. If the breaths still do not go in, continue CPR for choking. Give 30 compressions, one and a half inches or at least one third the depth of the chest. Compressions will force the air out of the lungs and dislodge the obstruction. Check the mouth for the obstruction. Attempt to ventilate. If the breaths are still not going in, repeat cycles of 30 compressions, check the mouth for the obstruction, and attempt to ventilate. If you see the object, remove it. If the rescue breaths go in, this means the airway is now clear. If the infant is still showing no signs of breathing, immediately begin CPR for resuscitation. Welcome to the Advanced Healthcare CPR Chapter. This chapter is intended to teach advanced skills for medical and health rescuers, including two rescuers CPR. Adult CPR. Survey the scene. Check the area for danger. Check for responsiveness. Open the person's airway and do a quick visual check for breathing for five seconds. Activate the emergency response system and retrieve an AED if available. If you are alone and dealing with an adult, Call EMS first. If the arrest is due to asphyxiation, perform five cycles or two minutes of CPR first, then call EMS and retrieve an AED if one is available or nearby. In this case, survival rates are higher if CPR is performed immediately. Pulse check. To check the carotid pulse, place two fingers beside the larynx and throat muscles, stopping near the Adam's apple. Check for pulse for no more than 10 seconds. If there is no pulse, or if in doubt, begin CPR. Give 30 compressions. Give 30 compressions at least two inches deep. Open the airway and give two breaths. Open the airway. Give two slow breaths. Be sure not to force in too much air. Repeat cycles of 30 compressions and two breaths. 
If the AED arrives, turn it on. Bare chest. Attach pads. The AED will analyze for heart rhythm. If a shock is advised, stand clear and say, I'm clear, you're clear, everybody's clear, and push to shock. Continue CPR after shock delivery. The AED will reanalyze every two minutes. Many tasks performed by healthcare providers can be performed concurrently by an integrated team of highly trained rescuers in appropriate settings. Effective communication and uninterrupted compressions is key. Unwitnessed arrest. If you didn't see the cardiac arrest happen, perform five cycles of CPR before using the AED. CPR will prime the heart and get it ready for a shock. Two rescuer adult CPR. If there are two rescuers, the first rescuer will check for responsiveness and open the person's airway and do a quick visual check for breathing for five seconds. The first rescuer will tell the second rescuer to call 911 and bring back an AED. If pulse is absent within 10 seconds or there is any doubt, the first rescuer will start CPR at a ratio of 30 compressions to two breaths. When the second rescuer returns, they will confirm that EMS is on their way and begin placing pads without interrupting CPR. After shock delivery, the two rescuers will resume CPR and switch roles every two minutes or five cycles. Special considerations. If pulse and or signs of circulation are present, begin rescue breathing. For adults, give one breath every five to six seconds. Recheck for signs of circulation every minute. If circulation remains present, continue rescue breathing. Jaw thrust. If a head or spinal injury is suspected, perform a jaw thrust to open the airway. Lift their jaw upward using your index fingers while your thumbs apply a gentle pressure to keep the head from moving off the ground. You can even use a jaw thrust to secure a mask while ventilating. Bag valve mask. A BVM or bag valve mask is used with two people. One rescuer positions the mask with a tight seal and opens the airway. The second rescuer provides ventilations by squeezing the bag until the chest rises. The bag should be squeezed smoothly to not force in too much air. The benefits of BVM include protection from infectious disease and better oxygen delivery. The person will receive about 21% oxygen as compared to mouth-to-mouth -mouth or mouth-to-mask ventilations, which only supply about 16% oxygen. It is also recommended that the use of the BVM be better utilized if there are two rescuers performing CPR. That way, the second rescuer can concentrate on maintaining a good head position and a proper seal. child CPR. Survey the scene. Check the area for danger. Check for responsiveness. Open the child's airway and do a quick visual check for breathing for five seconds. Activate the emergency response system and retrieve an AED if available. If you are alone and dealing with a child, perform five cycles or two minutes of CPR, then call 911 and retrieve an AED if one is available or nearby. Remember, for children, most arrests have an asphyxial cause rather than a cardiac-related cause. In this case, survival rates are higher if CPR is performed immediately. Pulse check. To check the carotid pulse, place two fingers beside the larynx and throat muscles, stopping near the Adam's apple. Check for pulse for no more than 10 seconds. If there is no pulse, or if in doubt, begin CPR. 
Give 30 compressions. Give 30 compressions, two inches or one third the depth of the chest. Child CPR can be performed with one or two hands to achieve a compression depth of two inches or one third the depth of the chest. Open the airway and give two breaths. Open the airway. Give two slow breaths. Be sure not to force in too much air. Repeat cycles of 30 compressions and two breaths. If the AED arrives, turn it on. Bare chest. Attach pads. Place one pad on the center front of the chest and one pad on the center back. The AED will analyze for heart rhythm. If a shock is advised, stand clear and say, I'm clear, you're clear, everybody's clear, and push to shock. Continue CPR after shock delivery. The AED will reanalyze every two minutes. To rescuer child CPR. Give 15 compressions at a rate of at least 100 compressions per minute. Give two slow breaths. Continue 15 compressions and two breaths for five cycles. Switch roles every five cycles to maintain quality of CPR. Repeat until help arrives. Special considerations. If pulse and or signs of circulation are present, begin rescue breathing. For children, give one breath every three seconds. Recheck for signs of circulation every minute. If circulation remains present, continue rescue breathing. Bag valve mask. You can use a bag valve mask on a child using a pediatric BVM. Use the head tilt chin lift or jaw thrust to secure the mask in place. Infant CPR. Survey the scene. Check the area for danger. Check for responsiveness. Open the infant's airway and do a quick visual check for breathing for five seconds. Activate the emergency response system and retrieve an AED if available. Pulse check. To check the brachial pulse, place two fingers on the inside of the upper arm between the bicep and the tricep. Check for pulse for no more than 10 seconds. If there is no pulse or if in doubt, begin CPR. Give 30 compressions. Give 30 compressions just below the nipple line, one and a half inches or at least one third the depth of the chest. Open the airway and give two breaths. Open the airway slightly and give two slow breaths. Repeat cycles of 30 compressions and two breaths to rescuer infant CPR using the two thumb method with hands encircling the chest and ribs of the infant and the rescuer's thumbs placed in the center of the chest just below the nipple line. Give 15 compressions, one and a half inches or at least one third the depth of the chest. You should go at a rate of at least 100 compressions per minute. Give two slow breaths. Continue 15 compressions and two breaths for five cycles. Switch roles every five cycles to maintain quality of CPR. Repeat until help arrives. Special considerations. If pulse and or signs of circulation are present, begin rescue breathing. For a baby, give one breath every three seconds. Recheck for signs of circulation every minute. If circulation remains present, continue rescue breathing. You can use a bag valve mask on a baby using an infant BVM. Use the head tilt chin lift or jaw thrust to secure the mask in place.
Thank you for watching First Response, The Complete Guide to CPR. Remember, this video is not a substitute for live training and it is recommended to contact a local first aid CPR training company. For more information on courses in the Greater Toronto Area, please visit heart2heartcpr.com.